Roper, Williams, and Lee, the Deadly Three, penetrate the secret chambers of an evil island empire. What do you know about Han? He lives like a king on that island, totally self-sufficient. A fortress without walls, protected by an invincible army that needs no ordinary weapons. This is Enter the Dragon. In his 1979 smash hit movie, Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee introduced us to the idea of underground fighting rings. Shadowy martial arts tournaments held in secret locations where competitors fight to the death to determine the world's most badass martial artist. Also known as the Kumite, this idea of unregulated, brutal martial arts tournaments really took off in popular culture after Enter the Dragon. Famous bullshit merchants like Frank Dukes claim to have countless wins in illegal, unsanctioned kumite fights that took place somewhere in the Indonesian jungle, and even conned enough people into believing this shit that Van Damme starred as Dukes in his 100% accurate biographical movie Bloodsport. Nineties video games like Pit Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Street Fighter also popularized the idea that in order to get a black belt in Taekwondo, you had to first murder 99 opponents using only your fists in an underground fighting ring held on a barge in the middle of the Amazon. Underground fighting rings do exist but they're not as sexy as the King of Iron Fist tournament from Tekken or the Kumite from Bloodsport. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at three of the organizations putting on unsanctioned underground backyard fights. Our first organization is Street Beefs. Street Beef. The term organization applies loosely to street beefs, as I'm not really sure you can call a backyard brawl between an old lady and her neighbour organised. But street beefs has been churning out fights with such stunning regularity that it makes me genuinely wonder what is going on in this state that all these people have so much fucking beef with each other. For those of you not in the know, street beef, street beef. This is a backyard fighting ring featuring kickboxing, boxing, MMA, and occasionally old lady slap fights. Fights are quick, brutal, and for every one that actually has two legit fighters with a modicum of talent, there's a hundred trash tier brawls between untrained people whose idea of performance enhancing drugs is meth. Squeak beef, Squeak beef. fights tend to fall into one of three categories. Untrained versus untrained, Trained versus untrained. And very rarely, trained versus trained. Fights take place in an arena known as Satan's Backyard. But honestly, I kind of feel like Satan would have a classier backyard than this. More like something out of a Bosch painting than this deeply depressing visage of 2020s America. And while on the surface, streak beef, streak beef may look like any other redneck backyard brawl, only missing someone being pile driver through a table. A deeper inspection reveals Street Beefs has more to it than meets the eye, and has put on some pretty fascinating fights. First up is Hell on Wheels vs Gorilla, and yep, you are seeing this correctly, the maniacs at Street Beefs actually went and did it. They put on a backyard, unsanctioned boxing match between two guys in wheelchairs. And honestly, at first I thought, this is disgraceful, it's nothing more than looking for a cheap laugh by making these guys fight each other. And then I saw this in the comments. That's a comment from a disabled person, thanking Street Beefs for giving the wheelchair community the chance to actually take part in stuff like this for once. There are multiple other comments saying the same thing, thanking Street Beefs for treating disabled people like real people for once. 
And reading this, I was forced to confront my own prejudices, in that maybe it was me who thought this was being put on as a joke and not street beefs. And why shouldn't disabled people be allowed to take part in combat sports? Because society feels we have to treat them like they're made out of glass and protect them from getting more disabled? Either way, it's not personally something I would watch in future, but I think Street Beefs deserves a bit of credit for putting on fights for wheelchair-bound fighters, whether it's to your taste or not. The next fight that I found genuinely interesting was Gash vs Gumby. A kickboxing fight between a man and a trans woman. I imagine it's incredibly difficult to get any kind of competitive combat sports experience for trans women, as genetic women might not want to fight you if they assume trans women have an advantage thanks to having the bone density and musculature of a male, and any man fighting you stands to lose more credibility than they gain regardless of the outcome. And in other competitive sports, trans women are being banned outright from competing, such as in women's rugby. But Gash is out here fighting men instead of taking the potentially easier matchups against other women. So I think credit is due to Sneak Thief. Sneak Thief! here for actually putting on this fight. As this is not a fight you will ever see in any legitimate organization. It's too close to being a full contact fight between a man and a woman. And no athletic body is ever going to sanction that. And no promotion would ever put it on. But I give credit to Gumby for taking the fight, and also big respect to Gash for going out there and fighting guys. Maybe I'm reading too much into how deep beef steaks beef steak. really is. Maybe I'm giving too much credit to a backyard brawling ring that puts on some of the most genuinely piss poor attempts at combat sports I have ever witnessed between competitors who look like they rolled straight off the couch and into Street Beef's shabby octagon. Maybe they do just put these fights on for the freak show element, I can't speak for them. But it's all there on YouTube for you to make your own mind up. Next up is Defend Fight Club. Defend FC is a German fight club, and if Street Beaks, Street Beaks. is the Bellator of underground fighting, then Defend is the UFC. They actually have some production values, complete with commentary, all in German though, fighter introductions, and even post-fight interviews. The closest Street Beefs gets to a post-fight interview is when one of the competitors turns up on the fucking news. I'm not trying to make out like Defend FC as Hollywood levels of production values or anything, but at least they have someone editing their videos, which is a nice change in the world of backyard brawling. When it comes to the fights themselves, I have to give credit to Defend FC because almost every fight is actually between trained fighters, which I realize is a pretty low bar to clear to get credit, but this is unregulated fight clubs we're talking about. And while it's not elite caliber combat, it's a million miles from the redneck fever dream of street beefs. And some of these fights you can actually picture taking place in the minor leagues like Cage Fury and Cage Warriors. It's also nice to see Defend FC keeping up with the spirit of Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter by arranging style-based matches. Defend has put on matches such as Judo vs Kickboxing, BJJ vs Karate, and Wing Chun vs MMA. Their BJJ vs Karate match was a very interesting fight. It had its very own attempt at a Masvidal style flying knee KO and some really legit striking. some good groundwork and sub attempts and a great KO. This is honestly the kind of fight I'd expect to see on someone's highlight reel before they get called up to the big leagues. There's also a pretty great, if lopsided, K1 vs Street Fighting match. I'm not sure why Street Fighters seem to do so poorly in these matchups. Maybe it's because they can't actually do a Hadouken or a Dragon Punch in real life but you can actually pinpoint the exact moment in this fight where the K1 guy realizes his opponent ain't about that life and decides to just drop his guard and stunt on this guy for five minutes. Defend has also put on fights advertised as Gangster Rapper vs Chechen Fighter. I didn't actually know Gangster Rap was a form of self-defense, but I have a tip for any future people who think their Dr. Dre albums will protect them in a fight. 
and that is if you're getting into a backyard brawl against a guy whose fighting style is wrestling, he's Chechen and his surname is Megan Madoff, you're in for a pretty bad fucking time if you think rapping your way out of it is going to work. These are legitimately enjoyable scraps, so Defend is really doing something right by putting on fights like these. I honestly think with a bigger budget and an actual ring or octagon, Defend FC could probably have a decent run as a feeder league for Bellator. I mean, fuck it, if Fight Circus is a thing that can exist, why can't Defend become a real league? Our last underground fight club is King of the Streets. The first thing I'd like to point out about King of the Streets is that what you're hearing right now is actually the theme tune for King of the Streets. That's not music that I picked, that's actually King of the Streets hype music. That music genuinely feels more at home in psychological horror classic Silent Hill 2 than it does in any kind of fight promotion. It fits perfectly and it's even more terrifying, which kind of tells you all you need to know about King of the Streets. What is King of the Streets? King of the Streets is something I am absolutely not even going to attempt to make fun of or take the piss out of because King of the Streets is fucking terrifying. I feel like if I made any jokes about King of the Streets, these dudes would find me and burn my house down. King of the Streets competitors all look like they're taking time out from their prison sentence to take part in an underground MMA match. King of the Streets is the only fight club where I legitimately think this could be the day I finally see a dead body thanks to MMA. Every fight takes place in the kind of abandoned warehouse you'd expect Liam Neeson to have to rescue his daughter from. The fights take place on hard concrete, which in itself is fucking crazy because all it takes is a guy getting KO'd and falling on his head and you now have a win via manslaughter on your professional record. If Streak Beans is Bellator and Defend is the UFC, then King of the Streets is the fucking running man. Whereas Beef Streets put on fights between untrained people or trained versus untrained, King of the Streets has only one kind of fight. Psychopath versus Psychopath. If UFC 1 was marketed with the tagline, there are no rules, King of the Streets should be marketed with the tagline, there is no humanity. 12 to 6 elbows, punches to the back of the head, knees to a downed opponent, soccer kicks with fucking shoes on? Yeah, it's all legal in King of the Streets. King of the Streets fights are all brutal, bloody, and seem like they're only ever an inch away from someone throwing a bat or a blade into the middle of the octagon. Researching underground fighting for this video, I've seen some shit, but King of the Streets is the only one to actually make me feel genuinely uncomfortable. And that brings us to the end of this journey through the world's most violent backyards and abandoned warehouses. 
Honestly, before making this video, I never watched anything that wasn't an officially sanctioned fight. Even Kimbo Slice or Masvidal's backyard fighting, I just couldn't bring myself to watch. I guess there's still that early 90s worry that all of it's being organized by Shang Tsung, or it's all a front for a global spank smuggling ring or something. When it comes to fighting though, I prefer when there's actual doctors on site and for proper financial rewards for the competitors. Will I watch it again? For comedy value, I might watch Street Beef. Street Beef. If it comes up in my recommended. For actual fighting, Defend FC is fairly legit, so yeah, I'll probably watch that again. King of the Streets? I'm afraid that's a bit too much for my bitch ass. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been really enjoying making MMA and martial arts content to keep me sane during lockdown when I can't go to the gym or BJJ and I appreciate every single like and comment whether it's positive or constructive criticism or just good old fashioned malignant internet criticism. I appreciate you all and see you in the next